All right, hi everyone and welcome back from lunch. I hope you had a really good lunch and that you're ready for the last stretch of talks. We have three more talks here today and I think you're going to like them. Uh, so our next speaker, uh, he is uh, the co-founder of his own company. He's also a developer at this company called QMinder. Uh, he's going to talk to you about core animation, which is an incredibly uh, important technology for anyone developing apps for Apple's platforms because it's really an underpinning technology. He's going to show you some use cases and really how you can tame core animation to do what it is that you want. Uh, this is also his very first time giving a talk at a conference like this, so I want you to give an extra really nice warm welcome to Mr. Kristaps Greensbergs. Wait. All right, hi everyone. My name is Kristaps, and I would like to talk about core animation today and uh, how to tame this brilliant and um, sometimes overlooked framework. But uh, firstly, why there is tame in my talk's title? And what does it mean, actually? I inspired about this word from book Little Prince, where Little Prince wanted to tame a fox. But Fox explained to Little Prince that if you tame me, then we will need one another. So during this talk, we'll try to tame core animation because it's very wild animal, but yet powerful and beautiful, but very hard to tame. But once you do it, you cannot live without it. And here's a little bit about me. I have more than 15 years of experience in dev field in various roles, like building Oracle databases, web apps and web systems, and even desktop apps for Mac and Windows. But I started to work with iOS ever since it came out, so basically since early beginning. And uh, now my daily tasks are all about Swift developments, which includes iOS, tvOS, watchOS, macOS, and even server-side Swift. And I'm involved in Swift Weekly Brief newsletter, so we deliver news about what's happening in Swift, what's happening in open source Swift, and also in the uh, community itself, right to your inbox. So you can go and check it out later. By day, I run my own company called QMinder, which is a smart queue management system using Apple devices like iPads, iPhones, and Apple TVs. So basically, in short, instead of these number tickets you have seen maybe in banks or somewhere else, we use people names. So it's like Starbucks, but just for physical locations like healthcare, retail, and other like these service type of locations. It's always hard to start presentations, so I would like to start with a small story. So this is my cat, and uh, his name is Mr. Byte. And uh, actually, we can call him Kilobyte now, because he's much bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I really like to play with him and tame, tame him. But uh, there is one catch that uh, he doesn't like that. Like, it takes quite an effort to do it once you want that uh, the cat does, right? So it's similar with core animation, that sometimes it takes quite many iterations once you get the outcome that you really wanted. One day, my designer came to me and presented this brilliant idea to make this background animation for our Apple TV application. Uh, when she showed this idea, I was like, okay, it should be easy, right? Because I have had some experience with UI view animations, and it's like same stuff, right? But uh, how hard can it be? Later in this presentation, I will share my story, how I actually did it. And uh, by the way, here is Mr. Byte enjoying core animation. And here is a great quote by Saroosh, who is one of the speakers here. Animations in iOS are easy, except when they are not. So I can totally, honestly relate to this quote. This is how I exactly felt when my designer asked me uh, to make this animation. Like, moving views here and there, like, it's relatively easy. But when you want something, like, sophisticated, then it gets very tricky. So today my goal is to talk about core animation, like a small introduction about it, how does it work. I will focus on the path property animation, like only, only this specific thing. And then I will show my real life example, what I created, what my designer asked. 
But what is uh, animation? Animation has been an important role in macOS, user interface, and also iOS since beginning. We all have seen this genie effect when we minimize application, it slides nicely to the dock in uh, macOS. And we have seen so many times that we actually hardly notice it anymore. But uh, actually, Apple integrates the animations in their apps, operating systems, and users are starting to expect it. So we really want these nice animations. But actually, animation is a change in value or state over time. So if you look closely at this cat animation, first the cat kind of slides from left to right. And that is a value change. And in the end, when cat nicely disappears, that is a state change. But what is core animation? Core animation helps us to build powerful user animated things, like user interfaces. But the uh, codename for core animation was Layer Kit inside Apple in the early days, because it heavily relates to the layer concept. And first time it was presented in uh, 2008 WWDC, I mean 2006, and uh, it was during macOS Leopard. And the creator of this framework was John Harper, who later joined Facebook. And uh, in Macworld 2007, that was the big conference where the first iPhone was presented. And when Steve Jobs unveiled the first iPhone, he said that this iPhone runs stripped-down version of Mac OS X. And that included also Mac core animation. So it, it means that we had core animation since early beginning. But what is core animation's definition? I, of course, I went to Google, Google here and there, but uh, all those kind of definitions were quite complex and I couldn't understand exactly. But then I went to official Apple documentation and I can say it's, it's quite good there. And I think it's much clearer explanation there, so let's break it down. So core animation gives us high frame rates to make really nice animations without uh, burdening the CPU. So that means that our apps are not slowed down, and we can use CPU for other purposes. <clears throat> Let's start with some clarifications that core animation isn't UI view animations. How did I know that? Once I wanted to animate nicely corner radius over time, so here is a code example, and the result was that uh, it just jumped to the new value. There was no animation at all. Uh, the thing is that you can animate with UI view animations only UI view properties, unlike layer properties. So we can say that these UI view animations are like kind of stock animation and like low cost animations. And when you when you want something more, then you go level deeper to the layer level using core animation. Another technology we need to talk about is core graphics. It's completely CPU-bound operation, so it executes on the main thread. Actually, it's more kind of precise, I mean pixel-wise, than core animation. But yeah, it's using core CPU under the hood. But the good thing is that you can use core graphics to draw stuff on the screen, and core animation to animate later. So as the core, core graphics is CPU-bound operation, it can be slower on older devices. And core animation is deeply integrated into iOS and macOS stack. So if we are using UIKit and AppKit, then we are using core animation under the hood, even not knowing that. And core animation is using metal and graphics hardware under the hood. So GPU is the lowest level there. But so in, in the end, what is core animation exactly? Core animation is Cocoa framework which is responsible for building animations for iOS, macOS, and tvOS. It means, in general, you can write cross-platform code for these platforms using this framework. And I would like to point out that it's not 
supported, at least not officially, for watchOS. But uh, we can ask Guy later, uh, after my talk. He is willing to share more about uh, watchOS, and he really likes animations as well. And core animation is hardware powered, so it means it's using GPU, and it runs on separate process, so leaving, uh, leaving the uh, main thread and CPU free for other things. But when building animation, core animation, we need to think about two things. One is time of, uh, of completion and the frames we need to get to the end of the animation. So the trick is here that core animation will rather drop the frames be in between to the end, this animation, these intermediate frames, than to finish uh, animation on time. So that means that we don't know how this animation will actually uh, happen. So during runtime, there are several factors like what's the system load, how old is your device, like uh, GPU uh, capabilities, all these things come together and you can see only on, during runtime how this animation will happen. So basically you just tell what you want to animate, what kind of properties of views or windows, uh, and, uh, I mean, and then you just send this information to the core animation and it does its job. figure out how this animation works, like what's the animation behavior, core animation is using interpolation method to plot out points, how to increment this value for the, the property between the start and end of the animation. Kind of the regular one is a linear one, so it increases each time it increases for the same amount uh, this property. It's like a, a straight line from the start to the end. Kind of math is quite uh, tricky and tedious here. You can make your own interpolation methods, but uh, thank God core animation gives us some possibilities there. So we don't need to mess so much with it. Typical refresh rate for our screens is 60 frames per second. Okay, now there is a new iPad which has 120, but uh, for simplicity reasons for this example, let's think about 60. So if you are going to move one view from one point to another. So this example, let's say from zero to 10. And uh, we want to, this animation happen in uh, 0 0.25 seconds, so quarter of a second. And uh, it means that we have 60 frames per second, and that in the end, it's 15 locations. So that's the math, what core animation is doing behind the scenes. So if we take away the start and end position, because in these 15 locations, it's there as well, we have 13 locations there. So if we are using kind of linear interpolation type, then it, it's, in, it's increasing this value each, each frame. So this is the math, what, what's behind the scenes. So and uh, we aren't restricted for only this linear uh, interpolation type. We have several choices there. Thank God, uh, core animation is, provides us different methods like ease in, ease out, and, and so forth. So we can use these to kind of make the animation m maybe much nicer. We can make our own timing functions, but for most of the needs, uh, I would say that these kind of built-in ones are more than sufficient there. And here's a code example how we can set these timing functions. So we basically set the, we create the uh, timing function object. And using enum, we can specify what kind of type we need. So uh, thank God we don't need to use these stringly typed uh, methods anymore. So that's good there. Next topic I want to talk about is our animation types. So there are three of them I would like to mention. First one is basic animation, so it's single keyframe animation. Second is keyframe animations, so we can specify the value for each keyframe. But during this presentation, I'm not going to talk about that because it's a whole separate talk itself. And the third one is grouped animations. So we can group multiple animations together. So let's say we want to move one view to, uh, from one location to another, then fade out and fade in again. We can group these animations together and work as a whole 
like bundle. And once we add this to uh, like uh, to start the animation, it does its job. <coughs> and here is a little note for might be useful for us is that if we are using UI views, actually it's backed by CI layer. So each UI view has its own CI layer behind the scenes. So if you want something more lower level, then we go level down and we are using CI layers. So it gives us more flexibility and also more performance if you need that. Core animation kind of concept is in 2D space and there is no depth, but we can use kind of core animation to animate nicely in 3D, 3D space. So this example is from our original iPhone. So when Steve Jobs unveiled the first iPhone, he showed iTunes that you can animate these covers in iTunes really nicely in 3D kind of concept. And later on, this, uh, this thing uh, was also for uh, Finder. So it was implemented there as well. And using kind of these tricks, we can make, co make this core animation to happen kind of in 3D space. To understand more about views and layers, let's see how they differ. Views are more hierarchy kind of layouts, and you can use auto layout for them. So either you like auto layout, it's up to you, but you can use it. And they can receive user interactions like pinches, gestures, clicks, and so forth. And it's more like flexible and more powerful. So you can subclass views, you can make your own, and, uh, and so forth. But the main thing is that it runs on the main thread on the CPU. On the other side, layers, they're kind of much simpler hierarchy. They're faster and like faster to draw as well. But there is no responder chain, unlike with views. And as there's no kind of so much custom logic, it, they are not so flexible and fewer classes for subclass and, and use if you want something more. And it runs on GPU on the separate thread. So the uh, main thread is for other things. CA shape layer is specialized subclass of CA layer. So using this class, we can draw shapes on the screen using vectors. So if we want to draw this rectangle here, then we start from one point, then we move to another point. So that's uh, one vector. In the end, this consists of four vectors. And when we finish this drawing this shape, we just say it's closed and we can set fill color and other things. And here's an example for drawing a triangle. So you move to the first, first point there, and then add line to, to the next kind of vector. And then you add, as a CI shape layer, add some properties like line width and so forth. And the uh, important thing is that you need to kind of close this uh, path, otherwise it can result in some issues there. And you add layer in the end, this shape, and it draws on the screen. <clears throat> path animations are really powerful things and really complex of CI shape layer. And using this approach, you can animate from one shape to another. So basically you can morph from triangle to rectangle, like in this example. But the thing is that you need to re re use this thing really carefully. But keep in mind that both shapes, if they don't have the same amount of points, then the algorithm is somehow confused. So, as you see, this animation is really kind of, doesn't feel natural, it's kind of ugly as well. And even Apple is warning us in their documentation that they call these offline points. The algorithm is really confused, like I said, they don't know what to do. So we need to work with these online points. And how to make it nicer? You can make, kind of draw these both shapes using same amount of points. So here, nicely these sides of the triangle, they animate up and make the rectangle. 
And here's a code example which we can use to create a CI basic animation. And kind of good part here is that we can use key pass to uh, set up with path property. Previously, we used to type out stringly, but now we can use key pass for that. So that's a really nice added feature for Swift. And then we set the to value, which is the next kind of the new shape. And then we set the duration and other properties accordingly what we want. And then we just add to the layer and the animation happens. And we could group multiple animations together. So for instance, if you want to animate like this example from one triangle to rectangle, and then from rectangle to another triangle. So these are two separate kind of an, an, animations, and we can group them together. And uh, here's the code example what we can use for, to make grouped animation. But the main important part here is animations array, this property for the CA basic animation group. So that is an array which consists of all the animations we want to perform. And I would like to point out that if you want that these animations happen one after another, then we need to set begin time for each of these animations. Otherwise, when we set to the layer this animation, all these animations happen like together. And the other properties like auto reverse, repeat count, and so forth, we can use, we can set for group. We don't need to specify for each of these animations itself. And in this part of the talk, I will focus on my journey, how I made this background animation for Apple TV app. So as you can see, in this, here, these triangles are kind of moving slowly, making this nice lava effect. And I call it animating lava triangles. Idea about this came from this lava lamp. Maybe you have seen it before, but it works that the liquid absorbs more heat and it moves up and making this nice and calming kind of effect. And this was my initial drawing board, drawing board what I started with. So I plotted out all the triangles. So there are 30 triangles together and 24 points connecting them. Some of these points are out of the screen. And uh, trust me, I spent so much time to figure out how I can do this uh, animation, what I previously showed. I even visited uh, CocoaPods labs in Artsy in New York. And in the end, there were like 20 people figuring out this problem, how can we do it? And I remember that when I left, uh, Orta said, said me, good luck to do that. And when you do it, share with the community. So, what I'm using for animate each of these points, I'm using Archimedean spiral. So Archimedean spiral is also known as arithmetical spiral. It moves away from this fixed point with fixed constant velocity, and it's plotting out these points on the way. And I came up that I can use kind of five, 500 different points for each of these, these points. And Archimedean spiral also we can see in nature and architecture. And also Reichstag in Germany, in Berlin, this glass dome is built using Archimedean spiral principle. I won't go deep into math problems, but I would like to point out one issue I had to overcome. Was that if you use Archimedean spiral, then each coordinate is calculated in Cartesian coordinate system. So it means that it's distance from this fixed point and the angle. But in iOS and macOS and so forth, we are using polar coordinates. So using x and y axis starting from point zero. And as the math was not so complicated, it just was actually quite a simple conversion. To understand more how I can plot these points on the screen, of course, I went to uh, Swift Playgrounds, and I created this, this playground to, to understand how these points are placed on the screen. So I came up that I can use 500 different points there. 
but how it all goes together. The thing uh, is that I'm using core graphics in the beginning, drawing all these triangles. Because for some clients, we need different colors, so that's why I'm, I'm using core graphics there. Using CPU power, so on the main thread, these triangles are being drawn. And uh, then I'm making the calculation of the animation itself. So each of these points are moving clockwise or counterclockwise 500 different kind of locations. And the distance is different for this Archimedean spiral, this radius. So that's why these points, they don't feel to uh, kind of move in the same pace. And once this, this all the animation calculation is done, then I offload all that work to the core animation framework, to the GPU, and it does its job. So animation is working. And uh, yeah, I open source this thing as well in my GitHub. So later, after this presentation, you can go and check it out. Thankfully, there are multiple apps we can use to kind of experiment with core animation, like animations itself. And even most of them, they export Swift code there. I personally like the most Kite Compositor app. And some of these animations in this, this presentation was built with this tool as well. There are others like Flow, Haiku, Sketch, uh, with uh, some plugins like Anima plugin. They kind of work the same. And it's uh, generally a good idea to kind of experiment before you actually go to the code. So to wrap up everything, I have a couple of conclusions about core animation and animations itself. Sometimes animations are kind of can be too much and people don't understand them. Back in the days, Facebook had this brilliant app called Paper where you can animate the f uh, feed really nice way and you can like gesture back and forth like all these things, but kind of user didn't, they didn't understand it. And from my daily job, I can totally relate to that because last week I removed some code where we spent ridiculously huge amount of time to make this animation. We tweaked even like milliseconds and everything. But the problem was that some of the clients, it caused issues and not even like, yeah, it was quite big, big problem for them. And once we removed that, this kind of killing feature, most of the clients, they didn't notice. There is no feedback. We kind of miss it or, or not. Like, they didn't care, but we kind of put so much time there to, to make this animation. So with animations, I would say that less is more. About core animation, I can say that it's really powerful framework. You can do a lot with it. And it, there is really nice documentation provided by Apple. Sometimes we think, oh, Apple's documentation is like bad or something. But they have quite nice examples explaining everything and how the algorithm works, like these online offline points and, and so forth. So I would say the doc documentation from Apple is, is really good there. And from my experience, I would say that these simple things are relatively simple to do, but when you want something kind of more harder, then it gets really tricky. So I need to quote again Sarush about that. And uh, that's it. Thank you for your attention. And I will be available for your questions after this talk during this event. Thank you.